Let me see if I can show you guys. Uh, I'll full screen. Zach. That's me, by the way. There it is. Cafe Associate. And so, uh, I have this right up here. Uh, where would you be without streaming? I'd probably be, uh, at this point, let's say I'm 29. Uh, I'd probably be done with law school and, uh, probably, like, maybe working in a law firm as, like, maybe a, uh, you know, like something. Uh, I don't know, like, hopefully, like, a junior partner, but, you know, maybe a quirk or something like that. I don't know, whatever I could. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, before I started streaming, I was in business school. I already had one business degree and I was getting another one to, uh, transfer over to, uh, I was either going to go to UT Law or, uh, Baylor. And, uh, then I start. I, I told my dad, my dad was very happy about this, right? I'm like, dad, uh, you know, like the whole law school thing? He's like, yeah, yeah. Would you apply? I'm like, no, I'm going to make videos about World of Warcraft. Okay. He's like, you sure? Like, yeah, I'm sure. Mom says it's a good idea. They're divorced, by the way. Okay. All right. And, uh, you know, now, uh, I mean, nowadays, like, obviously, he's uh, he's my biggest fan, my, my dad. But, uh, um, yeah, from warrior to warrior. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically it, man. All right, we'll kill this guy and we'll be fine. Uh, law firm personal janitor. Well, I don't know. What I'm saying is like that's. I mean, if if you, it's the same as like any any like company or whatever, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure you kind of have to work your way uh, up from the bottom, right? Depending on like, everybody starts from a different place at the bottom, but generally you have to start at the bottom to get to the top. That's how pretty much all companies and like everything works. And, and before that, I worked for the IRS and. Uh, I did that for two years, and that was basically it. Uh, I worked for Sam's Club. Like, Sam's Club, the job was probably, I have actually, you guys want to see my name tag from Sam's Club? I've showed this before, but uh, I might as well show it now since we're just, like, right here chilling. Uh, so, uh, back in Sam's Club, right, I just, like, got a random fucking job. Like, all right, I'm just going to work at Sam's Club just to make some money and just keep playing well at my mom's house. You know, that was, like, basically, those are my aspirations. Make enough money to where, like, I don't get kicked out of the house and... That's basically it. And uh, that's literally the only thing. And just play WoW all day. That was all I ever wanted to do. And uh, as you guys can see, nothing has ever really changed, right? But uh, I found a slightly better gig than uh, than the Sam's Club Cafe, though. So I go to the Sam's Club ca uh, interview, right? And I didn't know, like, what this was for. So I put on, like, a suit and tie, right? And it's like, uh, from retrospect, like, why would I wear a suit and tie for, like, an interview at basically a, a restaurant? I think that's, like, a little bit overkill. And, um, but I, I didn't really know this, right? I, I didn't know what the, uh, what the job was for, honestly, until they, uh, until I went to the interview. I thought it was for something else, like an office job. And so, uh, I go there and, uh, they, they, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they hire me. And then the next day I have to be there at like fucking 9 a.m. Oh, actually, no, next day was orientation. That's right. Next day was orientation. And I slept through orientation and they called me like late and I showed up halfway through orientation. So already off to a really great start. And uh, they didn't really give a fuck about that, right? Because uh, it's like at Sam's Club, like they just, they're going through people all the time. So as long as they have somebody that can show up, like they're probably going to be happy. It's like a rating guild, right? A lot of these like shitty retail jobs, there's so many people that are just like show up and don't fucking do anything. You don't have to suck the boss's dick. You don't have to do anything like that. Just show up and do your fucking job and they're going to love you. They're going to love you. They're like, oh, thank you so much for just doing the thing that we're paying you money to do. Because so many people are just fucking dumbasses, right? They're showing up. They're causing problems. They're complaining. They're, oh, I want to talk to HR. Oh, this stupid thing happened. That stupid thing happened. And they're always mad or upset or something like that. So, you know, just having somebody that will just shut the fuck up and do their job. This is always something very comp compelling to them. Uh, let me put you guys in follow. We're not killing boss. Let me just look at my slash plate. Right, I spent one hour. One hour. I'm already halfway through the level. Okay. Here's my Sam's Club tag. I have it right up here. Let me see if I can show you guys. Uh, I'll full screen. Zach. That's me, by the way. There it is. Cafe Associate. And so, uh, I have this right up here. And so, at this point, like, I had... Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, it's real. It, it, all the stories are real, boys. They're all real. 
I work at Walmart too. It's too fucking true. Yeah, I mean, I go to Walmart, and there's literally this one guy. He's literally laying back, like over, like so. It's like you know that the pallets of fucking water. He's laying back, like uh, well, eyes up, like looking at the ceiling, right, on his phone. <laughs> Not giving a fuck, dude. And like, I can just imagine it's this dude's last day, dude. He's like, hey, yo, what if they fire me, dude? I'm gonna quit. They fire- Actually, he probably wants them to fire him so he can collect unemployment. So, uh, he's a smart guy. Probably the smartest person there. Nice, right, better to say it. Um, let's see. Talk about the IRS job. Uh, well, let me finish up the Sam's Cup story, right? So, we finally get hired. I, I finally hire me. I go through orientation and, uh, you know, it was a good time. Everything was fine. And, uh, then they asked me to come in at 9 a.m. I said, what the fuck? He said, nine. I, I said, we need you coming at nine. I'm like, at night? They're like, no, in the morning. Okay. So I show up at nine. You know what I feel like? Shit. I feel like absolute fucking shit. I'm not having a good time. I'm upset. I'm pissed off. And, and, and like, you know, and also I don't feel well because I, I, I'm not a... Uh, a nine, there's a 9 in the morning? Yeah, I stay up until it more often than I get up to it. Actually, now I'm getting up at 4 in the morning to play Classic World of Warcraft. Like, literally waking up at 4 in the I'm setting my alarm for 4.45 in the morning. So I can wake up and go to Taco Cabana and start my stream at 5 a.m. But, uh, you know, this, this matters, okay? Uh, whether those fuckers get their pizzas or not, I don't give a shit, okay? So, uh, anyway, I go over to the, uh, I oh shit. Um... I go over and, uh, you know, they're teaching me everything and, uh, you know, there's like apparently this like food safety test that I have to learn. Well, they quickly tell me, <laughs> don't worry about that, okay? You just do that. You do that later, all right? Right now we need you to work because the last guy quit because, you know, he went to jail or something like that. And so they just want to get somebody in here who actually knows what the fuck is going on. So, uh, you know, they're like, yeah, whatever. And, and like my, uh, uh, shit. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, so we're just sitting there and, like, not really doing anything, and I finally am taking one of the tests, and this is, like, I wanted to do this because I could just sit on there, uh, on a computer. So the first day, uh, I get up, and, uh, you know, I, I go to this place, and there's some water in here. Actually, no, I got it, never mind. Um, and so I, I go there, and, you know, I'm obviously not having a good time. And, uh, the food, just, like, working your food just makes me sick. Uh, I mean, that's all, it just makes me sick. And so I... I I go there, and by, like, probably the third day or so, uh, I, I, actually, probably, actually, no, I'll be honest, the first day, the first day I come home, and the, the first thing that I do is I look up I enrollment for, like, the, the colleges, you know, uh, like, UT, Texas State, all the other colleges that are nearby, because I was like, you know what, going to school and actually getting a better job doesn't seem that bad now, right, because before then, I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll just do whatever the fuck, right? immediately I went, I was like, yeah, I, that was the first day. I put in applications for other jobs because before then I wasn't motivated. I was not motivated to go to school or to get a job. And let me fucking tell you something. After working at Sam's Club for one goddamn day, I put in more applications that night than I had put in in the last fucking three years of my life. Okay, I was up till like fucking 3 a.m. doing that. And I had to be up at, I had to be there at nine the next day. So uh, it was very, very motivating. And uh, in a way that I'd never really been motivated before. So uh, anyway, so this happened uh, a little bit later on. And uh, then, uh, you know, about the third, second, uh, but I, I figured I'd cut, stay, stay at least a couple of days, right? Uh, I'm not going to quit the first day 100%, right? And then uh, third day happened, and uh, I had basically decided this is like, I'm not going to, this is not working, right? I'm not going to do this. Uh, I'm, I hate this job. They're not paying me any money for this. And also, like, I'm simply, like, I just get sick working here, right? Because I don't like working around food. Like, honestly, if I had worked as, like, a cashier or something, I probably would have been completely okay with it. And uh, everything would have been fine. But uh, because they made me work near food, I was just like, yeah, it's just not really going to work. So, uh, yeah, American minimum wage. It was a bad time. So, uh, anyway, uh, I go ahead and I go through that. And uh, this is, like, uh, I had already worked at the IRS at this point. Wait, did I? Have yes, yes, I had already worked at the IRS at this point. And uh, so... I come into work, this is like my last day, and it was also like my manager's last day, because he was like getting promoted or something. This is my manager, by the way, who, uh, you know, told me that I didn't need to do the uh, uh, the safety force, right? 
He's like, I just put the hat on and, uh, you know, hey, y y you know what it is. And so, yeah, he is getting promoted. He was going to managerial school for, uh, for Walmart or Sam's Club, right? And so, uh, he was leaving. And so I was like, he's like, all right, man, well, uh, we're going to go ahead and catch you up with everything. And they're explaining to me, right? After he left, I'm like, okay, we're going to need you here. Listen, you want to, you want to learn your new schedule? And this is like already after I decided I was going to quit. Uh, they're like, do you want to learn your new schedule? I'm like, sure. And, uh, so, uh, I'm like, okay. And, uh, I, I figured it out and they're like, okay, well, we're going to need you to come in. Listen, we're going to need you to come in tomorrow at 7am. Like we know it's early, but you've got to do it. We need people here. I'm like, shit, man, I've got to do it. You need people here. So I said, yeah. And they're like, okay, well, all right, that's good. I'm like, all right, what else do you have for me? They're like, we're going to need you to come in regularly at 10 a.m. And I was like, damn, that's early. I can do it. That's fine. I, I can do it. And they're like, okay, great. And so uh, that night I, I went home. And the next morning I woke up 1.45 p.m. It's like eight missed calls, three, three voicemails. Never listened to them. Never fucking listened to him. Never gave a fuck. And so anyway, I, uh, you know, and so I, I didn't give a fuck. And eventually, eventually, uh, this is like a couple of months later, right? Uh, cause I felt kind of awkward going back there right after I had just, you know, like quit the job and, uh, you know, without even telling him. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't go back there for a while. And, uh, finally I go back uh, to get my check and, uh, it was like a hundred dollars, $150, right? And I forgot what it was. And so I, I talked to one of the ladies there, right? And I think that she was there whenever I was there. I, yeah, I think she was. And she's like, well, you know, it doesn't really look good on your resume uh, if you go ahead and you're just like quitting jobs randomly. And, uh, you know, you just stop showing up to jobs. And I'm like, I put them on a resume. So, so then I said, uh, it's like, it doesn't look good whenever you put this job on a resume and you say that you quit the job, right? It's going to look terrible. And I'm like, I'm just going to lie on my next resume. How do you think I got this job? Took my fucking check and I left. And then that was basically it. And then after that, I went to college and I went to a business school for a while. And a little bit later on, I started my YouTube channel. And uh, that's that's how it all happened. Big fucking true. Well, she didn't even know what to say, right? Like, I uh, I didn't lie on my IRS application because it was a fuck. It's like a fucking felony to do that. Right. But every other job application. I oh, fuck. Yeah, dude. Of course, I make shit up all the time. Like, if there's anything that I can say that's not provable, I'm going to say it. Of course. Like, the thing is, like. Like, what do I want? I want the job. So it's like anything that I can do to get it, I'm going to do it. Right. And, and like, oh, oh, I would never do that. They even tell you to do that. Like resume school. They're like, oh, well, you know what? If you ever uh, had to, if you were ever the leader of a group project, put in there that you were a project manager of, uh, you know, like uh, assigned responsibilities or something like that. No, you weren't. Y you did an 11th grade history project that you were the group leader for that you ended up doing all the work for because nobody else showed up to class and one person got expelled for dealing drugs in your group, right? There's, what do you mean, dude? What do you mean? Like it, it, every single class, like I've been to these before. My dad made me go to them because I, I wasn't getting any jobs. And so am I going to die here again? Uh, so yeah, ready to turn wild. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like a bunch of bullshit fucking you know, things that are like completely not true, but you just put them on there because they sound good. Uh, it's not for me, man. So uh, anyway, and, and like, so yeah, and, and it's like, yeah, obviously lie on your job applications because like they're trying to fuck you. you. I mean, like if you want the job, the way I look at it is like you want the job, do whatever it takes to get the job. And and that's always the way that I've looked at things. Is it fair? No, well, who cares about what's fair? Just do whatever is going to help you. Don't worry about what's fair. Who cares about that? Just just do whatever is going to help you and that's it. And it's almost like they call your previous employers. That's why I said, I, I said, don't do anything that's verifiable, right? It's not like say, oh, yeah, I worked at the White House. Like, yeah, they're going to call Donald Trump and be like, yo, Donald, be like, yo, what up? Um, what, what about Bill here? And he's like, who the fuck is Bill? A and that's it. You know, nothing's going to happen. Jobs are all about networking. Uh, they are. It's same as guilds. Uh, the best way to get into a guild is to have a friend in the guild. Uh, that's the easiest fucking way. 
And uh, the uh, IRS story. Okay, so the IRS story. Uh, that's what happened with Sam's Club, right? And uh, with the IRS story, this is a... Uh, this is basically a thing, right? As I go to the IRS, and I think this is going to be like a really, really serious job, right? Oh my god, I'm working at the IRS. You guys ever watch Parks and Recreation? It was like that, except for there was more food, and there was no Leslie Nope. There were just a bunch of Ron Swansons, who actually didn't have some sort of libertarian agenda to push. They were just, they just made things difficult because they didn't want it, they didn't give a fuck. There was no Leslie Nope. There was no, uh, there was no April Ludgate. There was just a, a, a bunch of, uh, I, I forgot, like, who the other characters are, honestly. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of random-ass fucking people doing nothing. So we would have to process documents, right, for, like, uh, you know, tax purposes and everything. And um, we had, obviously, as the government, there are, uh, you know, there are numerical values in which you were judged by. And, um, you know, it was like a scale of, like, one to one to five, right? And uh, three was good, three was passing, two was shitty, four was great. Five was amazing, and one was, fuck you. Why the fuck are you doing this? Why are we giving you money? Right? And, uh, anyway. So, what, the only person, uh, you ignored, doesn't do damage? No. Uh, oh, you said if ignored, you doesn't? Yeah, exactly, yeah, he's the one I said I'd ignore. Um, so anyway, um, so I go to the IRS, and we, we go to the, we have, like, the orientation, right? And we have to, like, actually, like, literally, like, raise our hand and swear to, like, uphold the Constitution. I was like, fuck. You know, I'm like, okay, wow. You know, this is serious, alrighty. Uh, because it's the Internal Revenue Service, right? And, uh, we do this, and they have, like, a list of, um... Like, they have, like, examples of, like, you know, like, mail, that if, like, you get this mail, um, you have to, uh... It's, like, a really bad thing. And, like, one of them literally had... <laughs> it literally had a piece of mail on it. And it said exactly what you think it would say. And... Then after that, I was like, and they're like, yeah, any mail with, like, anything that has to do with religion on it, don't, like, if there's anything that's written on the letter that has anything to do with religion in any way, throw that shit away. Like, literally, send that to our, you know, our, our basically, like, our, our, not bomb squad, but, like, I forgot what it was called. But apparently there was someone, I'm trying to remember the story, what they sent. Did they send nachos or something like that? I, I forgot, they sent like food in the mail. And uh, you know, basically, and they called them like, I forgot, like protest returns or something like that. It was a long time ago, so I don't remember exactly. But uh, all I remember there was like somebody sent food in the mail and then there were like two of the people talking about it. And my manager was like this 500 pound dude, right? This big old beefy boy, right? And uh, we'll, we'll get back into this later on. But uh, the manager is this big old beefy boy. And he, he leans over with like, he's like, you get another one of them nachos in the mail, you send that over to my office. And it was just like the way he said it. He like, he meant it. He meant it, send, send those nachos over here to my office, we'll take care of them. So, uh, basically, I would, I would show up to work every day. I love this, this is like one of my favorite jobs. Like, I, I, if the IRS, I really mean this, if the IRS paid as well as streaming did, it would be tough for me to, to to pass up like not going and uh and, and doing the job at least like you know super part time right for like a tax season or something like that. Uh, I really really enjoyed the job. It was super super enjoyable, and uh, it was great. World first Milgrain, you? Yeah, I know. And uh, so anyway, uh, point I'm making. So we go and we do this uh, this this whole thing. And um, one time we're doing a potluck, right? And this is like I've told this before. This is the uh, the barbecued kitten story. And so I didn't want to spend any money on the potluck, right? Because I, 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 like, why do you think I have a job? It's to make money. Like, I don't want to go and spend money at my job. That's, like, counterintuitive. Like, why the fuck would I want to spend money at my job? Like, that, I'm, I'm here to make money, not spend money. So I'm like, I don't want to be part of this part -luck, potluck. So I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, yeah, fuck this. I'm not going to do this. And so I thought the best way to handle it was to put on something there that nobody wants me to, nobody wants to bring, right? And they'll tell me not to bring it. So what does nobody want brought to a potluck? Barbecued kittens. And so I put this on the list. And, you know, the, the thing about this is that, you know, a lot of the people that are working there, I mean, these are like middle-aged women right and uh middle-aged women like moms basically uh some of them are at least 
and they were having like a little a, a meeting, right? A, a, a council meeting about my behavior, right? And the fact that I would even think of putting this on there and how disgusting it was that I would do this. And uh, they finally brought it to my manager. And um, my manager just thought it was about as funny as I did. He's like, okay, it's whatever, right? He didn't give a fuck. And uh, I think they were kind of pissed off about it. They didn't yell at it before. And uh, so anyway, so uh, they scratched my name out and they scratched the, uh, like everything else was written in pen. And they scratched out the barbecued kittens with a fucking sharpie. So there's no way you could read what the fuck it said unless you had seen it before, right? There's no way you could fucking read it. It was like they were just pissed off. They were tired of my shit. You know, they were just so mad. And so I, I got out. I never had to uh, I never had to bring anything to the potluck. They never asked me to bring a single fucking thing again. And uh, it worked, actually. That's the best part about it. It's like, you know, my methods might not be... Uh, they might not be the most polite. They might not be the... Uh, uh, the nicest, but they're fucking effective. And, uh, this was certainly fucking effective. And, um, anyway, did you still eat it? Oh, yeah, of course, I ate all the fucking food. I ate all their fucking food. Of course. Yeah, I even brought some home with me at the end of the, uh, at the end of the night. Do I, does anybody need this? Uh, yeah, I do. I need this, right? Oh, yeah, of course. And, um, so then, uh, later on, we had, like, another pizza party, right? Because, like, why are we having a pizza party? Because it's on the government's fucking dime. That's why. And we have a pizza party every fucking week. We had a pizza party more at the IRS than I did at fourth grade. Like, we had pizza parties all the goddamn time. Oh, pizza party! Woo! Yeah, there we go! Pizza party! Let's go! You know, and so we, we go do that. And, um, anyway, so, you know, basically, uh, my manager at this point, he, uh... So, we were gonna celebrate birthdays, right? And my birthday was on the same month as his birthday. And he didn't want to celebrate his birthday because it would mean that he'd have to share his birthday with my birthday and it would make his less special. So he, he was just like, yeah, he didn't want to deal with that. And so, oh wait, your room? Okay, shit, my bad. I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. So yeah, that, that's basically what happened. So yeah, he didn't want to deal with it. And uh, it's not because he didn't like me, he just didn't want to share. Like he would feel this way about any other person there. So uh, this is the kind of person we're dealing with here. And um, apparently he decided that he wanted to have like pineapple cake. Or sorry, not pineapple cake. Uh, pineapple uh, pizza. And guess what? Nobody else wanted pineapple pizza. So some people voted for him. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll give him what he wants. We'll let him have his, have his pizza. It's okay. You know, he, he does such a great job. He never bothers us. Everything's okay. You know, but for me, I was like, yeah, fuck that. I don't want pineapple pizza. And I wanted pepperoni pizza. So what I decided to do is whenever it came around, they were doing like Roman numeral checks. For pepperoni pizza... I was like, check that shit off. I put like five extra fucking marks there, dude. They never caught on to it. They ordered a bunch of fucking pepperoni pizzas. And then obviously they all came home. Most people didn't want pepperoni pizza. That's why they didn't vote for it, right? And, and so Charles, uh, my manager, right? He was fucking pissed. And so he, he, he basically kept himself in his room, in his office. And if I remember right, He was trying to sell, or sorry, trying to order, and this was like back in the day. He was trying to order smoked salmon to the building, but he couldn't figure out how to get the smoked salmon inside uh, because of the uh, the security. So he wanted to smoke because, and then he wouldn't he wouldn't take anybody else's questions because he was pissed off that nobody would vote on his pizza. And uh, finally, you know, he was like, "Yeah, I don't want it. You guys don't want my pizza. You don't want to talk to me. That's fine. You can figure this shit out for yourself." And so eventually, uh, somebody else has to order the pizza. And um, we get all the pizza, and there's like two pizzas left that nobody ate, that they're, they're pepperoni. And so at the end of the night, I'm like, so what are we going to do with the pizza, guys? Oh, I don't know. You mind if I take it? Uh, yeah, sure, we're going to throw it away anyway. Yeah, I don't know how, I don't know why we ordered so many pepperoni pizzas. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, but that actually is my favorite. And they're like, okay, well, great, that kind of worked out. And uh, so then I got the whole fucking pizza all to myself. And I would take home food all the fucking time, dude. All the fucking time. It was like Golden Corral. Like, I would sit there and eat cupcakes and KFC in the same meal. It was absolutely delicious. I loved it. It was one of the best things. Like, I, as I said, I love that fucking job, man. I love that fucking job. And then on top of that, right? And so we then we go back and... Let me go back to the uh, the standards, right? The government standards. 
So my dad worked at the IRS. This is how I got the job. And uh, my dad was never really like a very, like my dad was like higher, like obviously he was like, you know, like higher than I was. But, um, you know, he never really did a very great job whenever he had that job either. So like he understood, you know, why it was low. But I would explain to him, I'd be like, listen, so you'd have to process like 140 documents an hour, right? With certain things, uh, with certain types of documents. And we would have people... They would process seven. Not 70. Seven. Seven documents. And there were some people like, because at the beginning I, I asked, I asked a friend of mine that was working there. I was like, well, why don't they ever do anything about it? And basically their logic was, if they, if they fire this person, they're going to get unemployment. So just keep them here and let's at least get seven documents out of them. Let's at least just get something out of them. It's not a lot, but we'll at least get something out of them because they've already paid all the money to fucking employ them and everything. They're invested. They don't really give a fuck. And they would be sitting there on their phone talking to their kids about how much their job sucked, not doing anything. Like, literally not doing a fucking thing. It was amazing. Never go on welfare and never get a job? I don't know, man. And uh, also, it's getting uh, another fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine spending thousands of dollars on a governmental fucking back background check, and then you get a dumbass, and you say, fuck, man, all right, let's get another one. And the other one's, the next one's even worse. It's like whenever you kick somebody out of your raid to invite somebody new, and a new person's even fucking stupider than the last one. Yeah, it's awful.